Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Remember to like and subscribe to remember all the important details your DM gives you. Maybe. Today we're doing something a little different. Rather than building a specific character, we're going to try and build the perfect men in black agent in Dungeons and Dragons. We're putting together a set of skills and spells designed to take out alien targets and make sure the general public is none the wiser. <laughs> Let's start off with our goals for this build. First things first, we need to be able to track and find unusual characters. Next, we'll get a Neuralizer to keep John and Jane Doe out of the know. Finally, we'll get some advanced alien weaponry to keep the planet safe. For stats, we're using the standard point array from the player's handbook. Roll for stats if you want, just keep multi-classing minimums in mind. Intelligence will be number one here to find aliens first, you need to understand them. Wisdom after that, tracking is tied to survival, which is tied to wisdom, you get it. Dexterity next, as most of your weapons are ranged and you're not the men in plate armor. Charisma should be decent so you can lie effectively about that thing that was just running down the street. Constitution's on the lower end but it's really rough to dump it so drop strength instead as we don't really need it. While the men in black work with aliens, most of them are humans, and a variant human will give us the most skills, especially if we take the skilled feat, giving us three skills of our choice. Take investigation, insight, and medicine. Pump your intelligence and your dexterity with your two skill points, and now back two skills. For your skill of choice, grab sleight of hand and take the spy background for stealth and deception proficiencies. We'll start off as a wizard. The MIB studies and applies a bunch of different amazing technologies that a common person may call magic. And grab two skills from their list, take arcana and history. First level Wizards have three cantrips. Take light since you don't have dark vision. It creates a bright light so that you can see things. Message lets you communicate with another agent within 120 feet of you, and they can send a message back as well. Finally, grab a taser with shocking grasp. It's a melee spell attack dealing 1d8 lightning damage and preventing the target from making reactions for one turn. You have a spell book with five spells. Call it a training manual and take mage armor, giving yourself an AC of 13 plus your dex modifier while you're not wearing armor. Maybe that armor looks like a black suit and tie? It doesn't specify. Comprehend Languages lets you understand all written and spoken languages for one hour, letting you communicate with aliens you're assisting. Detect Magic lets you sense magical auras and what type of magic caused them within 30 feet. This pairs well with Identify, which lets you figure out what a magical item is, what it does, and how many charges it has left if it has charges. Thunder Wave is your noisy cricket, forcing a constitution save of 8 plus your intelligence modifier and proficiency bonus, and dealing 2d8 thunder damage on a failed save and pushing the target back 10 feet. They take half damage on a successful save and they're not pushed. Finally, an alarm lets you put an alarm on a doorway or an opening that alerts you when something moves through it. This can either be out loud or in your head, depending on whether or not you want other people to hear it. Keep in mind you can only prepare an amount of spells per day equal to your intelligence modifier and your wizard level, so equip the most useful gadgets when you're setting out on a mission. Your training also gives you arcane recovery, letting you recover spell slots on a short rest equal to half your wizard level rounded up. Now that we've got some rookie gadgets, let's make sure that we're ready for field work with some ranger levels. Specifically a revised ranger, this is in an unearthed arcana online, not the player's handbook. Multiclassing in a ranger lets you grab a skill from their list, go for survival to help you track down fugitive aliens. You also get favored enemy, this is a type of creature you have advantage on tracking with survival checks, as well as plus two to damage with, with weapon attacks in combat. Humanoid is probably your best bet, several alien races fall into this category, like the Gith. You're also a natural explorer, meaning you have advantage on initiative rolls, advantage on attacks against creatures that haven't acted an initiative yet, and you can ignore difficult terrain. Second level rangers get a fighting style, archery will help you with those ranged weapons, giving you plus two to hit on a ranged attack. Runaway aliens tend to run away go figure. You can also grab some spells. Long Strider will help you catch up to anyone that's trying to run away, giving you an extra 10 feet of movement per round, and Jump will help you clear any gaps by tripling your jump distance. These both last a minute and don't require concentration, so put them together for superior mobility. Third level rangers get primeval awareness, letting you communicate simple ideas with animals and figure out how to calm them down. Maybe this means they're aliens in disguise? Who knows? This also lets you determine how many of your favorite enemy are within a 5 mile radius of you, and what direction they're moving in after a minute of focus. You can also grab a ranger conclave. The hunter conclave is for rangers that specialize in taking out unusual foes. The colossus slayer ability lets you deal an extra d8 damage once per round with a weapon attack to creatures that aren't at their full hit points. This helps you take out larger alien enemies, which is good because those tend to be harder to take down. Fourth level rangers get an ability score improvement. Bring up your intelligence. We want very high saving throws for some later wizard spells. Fifth level rangers get an extra attack, letting you attack twice instead of once with your action. Make sure you're outpacing your enemy's damage as your health is not great. 
great. You can also grab second level ranger spells. Pass Without Trace lets you grant creatures within 30 feet of you a plus 10 bonus to their self checks so you can move through the world undetected. Sixth level rangers get improved favorite enemy, letting you pick another type of enemy. Go for aberrations, that's the alien type for D&D. You also have advantage on saves against spells and effects from those creatures and deal an extra four damage to them. This can be non-lethal, just specify it first. You don't have to kill something if you want to interrogate it. Back over to wizard now, you get to add two spells to your book every level, but I don't want this video to be super long, and you can justify that almost any spell is a gadget the MIB uses. So, like we did with Doctor Strange, I'm gonna pick one per level, and then you can grab another one of your choice. Have fun. For this level, I'm picking Charm Person. This forces a wisdom save on a creature, failing that their charm by you for one minute, helping you get some compliance from a difficult perp, or convince a bystander to look the other way. Training at the MIB is an enrollment in the School of Enchantment, giving you a hypnotic gaze. This lets you force a wisdom save on a creature within five feet of you, charming them if they fail the save. While charmed by this effect, they can't move. It ends early if you move five feet away, or they can't see you. This is like a low-level neuralizer, though we can't change people's memories. Yeah, third level wizards can learn second level spells. Dark vision lets you see in the dark for up to eight hours. No guarantees this works if you throw sunglasses on top of it though. Fourth level wizards get another ability score improvement. Cap the intelligence for maximum saving throw difficulty. Your neuralizer needs to be working to keep the public paranoia to a minimum. For your spell, knock opens a locked box or door. But it makes a very loud noise that can be heard up to 300 feet away, so it's not exactly sneaky. Fifth level wizards can learn third level spells. Hypnotic pattern works like your hypnotic gaze, but on all creatures in a 30 foot cube, you don't have to be right next to them. It lasts for up to a minute unless you lose concentration or an affected target takes damage. Use this to occupy the entire crowd while you take care of something more pressing, like a giant cockroach trying to swallow the universe. Sixth level enchantment wizards get instinctive charm, letting them force a wisdom saving throw on a creature attacking them. If they fail, they have to attack another creature instead. You can only pull this off once per long rest, but you have to make a call before you know whether or not the attack is a hit. You'll love it, but your partner next to you might not. For your spell at this level, tongues lets any creature creature you touch understand all languages for an hour, and every creature that understands at least one language will understand the person you touch. This sounds similar to comprehend languages, and it is, but you can give it to another person, letting the rookie understand the illithid as well as you do. Seventh level wizards can learn fourth level spells. Confusion forces a wisdom saving throw on creatures within a 10 foot radius. If they fail, they roll a d10 on their turns. On a one, they have to move in a random direction. On a two to six, they don't move or take any action. Seven to eight, they make a melee attack on a random creature within range. Range, and on a 9 to 10, they get attacked normally. They can reroll the save at the end of each turn, but your spell save is maxed out, so good luck. Eighth level wizards get another ability score improvement, and your dexterity could use some work. It's important for you to be quick on your feet. For this level spell, Arcane Eye will let you do a little bit of surveillance, creating a spectral eye that you can see through. You can move it 30 feet as an action, and it can go anywhere on the same plane. Ninth level wizards can learn fifth level spells, so we can finally modify memories with the spell modify memory. This lets you change the memory of a creature from the last 24 hours if they fail a wisdom save. It can only be a 10 minute event so you can't restructure their entire life here and if the memory you drop in is too ridiculous the DM might just say the spell didn't work. Another interesting application of the spell is that you can give a target perfect recall of that 10 minute period instead of wiping them. You can use this basically to turn every NPC into CCTV for the MIBB. I mean MIB. 10th level enchantment wizards get split enchantment, making your enchantment spells of first level or higher than hit one creature, hit two creatures instead. So modify memory is now modify memories, helping you cover everything up. For your spell, legend lore lets you name a person, place, or object and learn some information about it. If you already know lore, the details are more specific. This one's kind of on the DM, just remind them that you burned a 5th level spell slot and didn't just roll a 10 on your history check. Agents tend to have an encyclopedic knowledge for this kind of thing. Magic may be involved. 11th level wizards can learn 6th level spells. Contingency makes sure that you're always prepared. You pick a spell that can target you of 5th level or lower and cast this and that spell using both slots, but nothing happens. Now that sounds bad, but basically what's happening is you're storing the spell for use sometime in the next 10 days. It activates based off of some condition, like dark vision if you're in low light, jump if you're near a gap of 10 feet or more, etc. Use this at the end of a long rest when you know you're going to be recovering your spell slots anyway, and basically give yourself some extra spells. Good agents aren't lucky, they're prepared. 12th level wizards get an ability
ability score improvement and you really need constitution to not die and keep your concentration on longer spells. Speaking of spells, let's get some damage finally with Disintegrate. This forces a dexterity save on a creature, failing that they take 10d6 plus 40 force damage. If this kills them, it turns them into dust. Generally you want to keep it non-lethal, but hey, if they're being uncooperative and can destroy the earth, do what you gotta do. 13th level wizards can learn 7th level spells. Sequester keeps a creature or object safe from detection, making it invisible to passers-by or divination spells and suspending it for that time. Now if it's a creature, it does have to willingly participate. This lasts until something triggers it to end and you set the trigger, like the big bag came back to life or someone found the MacGuffin of world frying. This trigger has to be within one mile of the sequestered thing, so keep that in mind, you might need to store stuff close to other stuff. Our capstone is the 14th level of enchantment wizard, giving you alter memories. This lets you choose one creature when you cast an enchantment spell that charms them, like charm person, and you make them forget that they were charmed. You can also force the creature to make an intelligence saving throw, or they lose a number of hours of memory equal to one plus your charisma modifier, probably two. This is very good as it basically turns your first level charm person into the fifth level modify memory. For your spell at this level, grab mass suggestion. This is technically a sixth level spell, but it's still pretty good. With it, you can force up to 12 creatures that fail a wisdom save to a fallen order you give them for up to 24 hours, as long as it's not directly harmful. So you can't make them swallow a bunch of glass, but you can make them dig a very large hole. Keep in mind the spell ends when the action is complete, so get creative and keep the non-agents occupied while you battle the aboleth in the area. Now that we've hit level 20, let's figure out how good of a build this is. First, you're a master of manipulation. I haven't seen a whole lot of enchantment wizards out there, but this sounds really fun. Charm people mess with their heads you got options for all of it you're also very well rounded with skills making sure that you can properly handle any role playing challenge comfortably finally you're an expert on tracking humanoids which are super common and aberrations which are super dangerous making you very valuable to the team for weaknesses ooh, you got some low health definitely less than 100 total meaning power word kill will end you and that's bad you're also not getting a lot of damage out of those ranger levels considering all of your abilities are tied to weapon attacks and your dex modifier isn't capped overall ranger is good it's just not super harmonious with a mostly wizard build. Finally, you're not dealing a ton of damage with your spells either. The list I've crafted is more roleplay and tracking based, so for the rest of the spells get some high-tech weaponry. But the MIB has always been about preventing catastrophes from starting rather than making them end. Use your plethora of skills and spells to find the baddies and take them out quietly so nobody knows what's really lurking in the stars. Just remember to be prepared for things to get rocky. Not every mission is going to be successful. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, subscribe for more. We do two videos every week. Next week, we've got someone who's very hot and cold and someone the Mafia couldn't properly threaten.